Hey everyone, I realized there was only a few slides left, so I thought I might as well just finish her up. This will indeed be less than 10 minutes. Uh, so our last few are all very uh, famous uh, disorders, disorders we've heard of quite a bit. So a couple of nuances about each, and then we'll be good for chapter 12. Autism spectrum disorder. Um, most people have heard of this new idea of the spectrum of autistic symptoms. Um, one of the terms that was discontinued seven or eight years ago when the DSM-5 came out um, was the term Asperger's. So they don't use Asperger's syndrome anymore. That's going to be folded into part of the autism spectrum. And you can see there that there's oftentimes, as far as symptoms are concerned, um, disabilities in language, social interactions, very difficult. It's very difficult for um, folks with autism to read the emotions of other people on their faces. Um, so understanding, kind of going back to that theory of mind and understanding somebody else's state of mind, it's very difficult for somebody um, on the autism spectrum to do that. Dyslexia, again, most people have heard of dyslexia. One of the common uh, misconceptions about dyslexia is that the letters get flipped around. That's one form of dyslexia, but there are other forms where the letters can actually kind of float or move. Um, the letters um, kind of blend together, um, become quite fuzzy or blend together. Uh, and there's actually some good websites I haven't checked recently, but a year or so ago, last time I was teaching this, there were some good websites that gave um, those of us that don't um, live with dyslexia, the opportunity to kind of see some of the different ways that the letters will kind of float and move um, for somebody that does have dyslexia. Um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This is another one that um, changed with the DSM-5. I believe it changed with the DSM-5. Um, we oftentimes will hear ADD and ADHD. Um, no longer does the DSM-5 use the term ADD or attempt attention deficit disorder. It's just attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So it's just the one qualification in the DSM-5. Again, this is uh, somebody that's going to um, have a very short attention span, easily distracted. Um, it's really difficult um, remaining inactive. You're always having to do something. Um, one of the interesting things about the medications they give for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is that actually um, the different medications will stimulate the mind. And people think, well, why do you want to stimulate the brain if the brain is already really stimulated? Well, the brain is seeking stimulation. And so what will happen is the medications will tell the brain, you have adequate stimulation. You don't have to keep looking. And that's why it will cal calm somebody down um, who is living with ADHD. Um, Tourette syndrome, we've got a nice little video um, of a gentleman, if it's the video I'm thinking of, he's got a great sense of humor, lives with Tourette syndrome. Uh, you get motor and vocal tics, so all of a sudden your arm will just kind of flinch like that. Um, so the motor tics uh, are just these, un, uh, these movements that are uncontrollable. And vocal tics, and these oftentimes take the form of um, swearing. And you'll just all of a sudden just say a bad word. Um, and the gentleman talks about this on the video that we'll watch, and that's Tourette's syndrome. Um, more neurocognitive disorders. This is the last slide, and this is these are the three that we usually associate with our older populations. Many of you might have had somebody in the family that has lived with one of these diseases, suffered with one of these diseases. So there's Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and dementia. Let's kind of start here with dementia because dementia has a place in both Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. You can have just dementia, so just that cognitive decline in both learning and memory, um, but you can also um, kind of devolve from that and go from dementia into one or both of the other two. Alzheimer's is going to be really focused on the memory uh, and the decline in cognitive functioning. Um, the brain cells are just dying off, and so the brain just can't keep up with uh, not only learning, but just cognitive functioning in general. And um, the deterioration becomes very, very severe in Alzheimer's uh, cases, or it can become very severe as those brain cells um, keep dying off. And then Parkinson's disease, you'll see um, a lack of dopamine um, hinders not only the cognitive functioning, but also the motor functioning. So with Parkinson's disease, one of the um, 
more noticeable symptoms is the, the tremors. The, the hands will shake. Uh, oftentimes with Parkinson's disease, you might get shaking of the head as well. So again, kind of these uncontrollable tremors in different parts of the body. And again, those, those three will oftentimes combine and somebody will live with all three of them or a couple of them at any given time. Okay, that is it for chapter 12. Uh, we'll take a test, review, all that kind of good stuff, and then we'll be on to chapter 13, how we can start treating some of these disorders.